In this video, I've got a few more Calgary Flames depth signings to talk about. And it looks like they want to continue the theme of signing former Vancouver Canucks. So hi there, it's Brad Hornby here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. As I was recording my last video where I talked about the Joachim Nordstrom signing and Dominic Simon, both signings, well, the Flames actually signed another defenseman, and they went overseas to uh, sign this defenseman to convince him to come back to North America, and Nikita Nesterov, and then another player that they signed, which is yet another former Vancouver Canuck that is coming to the Calgary Flames, is Josh Levo. So that's what I'll talk about in this video. Take a look at their career numbers and where we are at when it comes to the salary cap as when it's apparent with the flat salary cap that finding more value depth signings has been the key with the Calgary Flames for building up their roster and also noting how let's say for example the Dallas Stars and the Tampa Bay Lightning and how far they went in their playoff runs that it was apparent that we needed to improve our depth overall so I'll take out my smartphone and We'll take a look at the couple players that were signed over the weekend. First, in Nikita Nesterov, who actually, after I recorded my last video talking about the Jacob Nordstrom and the Dominic Simon signings, that Nikita Nesterov signed. And most recently, he came from the KHL as he latest played in the KHL, if I see the name right, the CKSK. Moscow team in the Continental Hockey League. He actually spent the last three seasons over in the Continental Hockey League as Nikita Nesterov does have some NHL experience as he was drafted back in 2011 in the fifth round, 148th overall, with the Tampa Bay Lightning. And he has played in the combination with the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Montreal Canadiens, but the last time that Nikita Nesterov played in the National Hockey League was in the 2016-17 season. His NHL numbers that he has produced in 132 games between the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Montreal Canadiens. He has 9 goals, 24 assists for 33 points and 81 penalty minutes. And he also has played in 28 Stanley Cup playoff games in the National Hockey League, scoring a goal success for seven points so let's say not bad for uh, let's say another depth defenseman who play would likely be you know on the bottom pair maybe extra defenseman with you know a little offensive upside but uh, if you take a look at what he's done in the Continental Hockey League last season with the CESK hockey team in 53 games he has uh, scored seven goals 16 assists for 23 points and in the four KHL playoff games in the Gregorian Cup playoffs and actually the Gregorian Cup playoffs because of you know the global pandemic got cut short. So he played in four playoff games and he has three assists in those four playoff games. However, the season before in the 2018-19 season in the KHL, in 41 games he has four goals, 14 assists for 18 points. But what stood out in the playoffs that season he played it in 20 games and scored two goals and nine assists for 11 points. So he has some lengthy playoff experience with the uh, KHL. He has the season before that. He played 21 playoff games and scored five points. So uh, this is a one-year deal worth $700,000 league minimum one-year contract. I would say not a bad uh, risk to take on a flyer. On a defenseman who the last three seasons has played over in the KHL, but does have some NHL experience. I know that it's the smaller ice that makes the game much different in North America than over in Europe, but that is the first sign for Nikita Nesterov, who, uh, as I'm going to say, rounding out our depth on defense for sure. But the other sign that uh, we made is we went to the Vancouver Canucks former Vancouver Canucks pool again and this will be number four because as you recall we signed the two biggest signing was getting Jacob Markstrom and Chris Tanev and then we also signed Louis Domingue for 
third string goalie, which you don't know what the 2020-21 season is going to be, how condensed it's going to be, that uh, we might need this depth that we picked up. And number four is now forward in Josh Levo, as he actually signed a one-year deal at $875,000. So we'll take a look at uh, Josh Levo, as uh, he can play on both sides of the wing. He will be someone who will be in the bottom six forwards, but uh, you know, I'd say this is yet another smart depth signing for the Calgary Flames to find some value. As originally, Josh Levo was drafted by the Toronto Maple Leafs back in 2011 in the third round, 86 overall. And Josh Levo has played his entire NHL career in Canada between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Vancouver Canucks, as he has played the last uh, parts of two seasons with the Vancouver Canucks, as he did make his debut with the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs in the 13-14 season. Overall, in the NHL, he has played 169 games between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Vancouver Canucks. He has scored 31 goals, 34 assists for 65 points, with a plus 8, 56 penalty minutes. However, he has actually not played any games in the Stanley Cup playoffs, as he was not on the Vancouver Canucks roster when they were in the return to play plan when the Vancouver Canucks went to the second round in the 2020 Stanley Cup playoffs. But it's that I'd say yet another depth sign that could provide some offense. It's very versatile in the bottom six. I would almost rank that just as what well as the Dominic Simon signing. He was also an all-star at the AHL level, as he was actually did play in the AHL Classic outdoor game as well. As I know with the Toronto Marlies, he definitely had a point per game pace, especially in the 15-16 uh, season, where this is in the AHL with the Toronto Marlies. He scored 50 in 51 games. He scored 70 goals, 31 assists, 40 points, and then the 15 playoff games with the Toronto Marlies. That was the last time he's actually played some playoff hockey at a professional level. In 15 games, 4 goals, 8 assists for 12 points. Last season, though, with the Vancouver Canucks, he did play 36 games, so he was in and out of the lineup. He scored 7 goals, 12 assists for 19 points. And then in the season before, with the combination of the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Vancouver Canucks, well, the free started off with the Vancouver Canucks, or the Toronto Maple Leafs in 27 games. He had 4 goals, 2 assists for Six points, and then when he went straight to Toronto or Vancouver, if 49 games, he has 10 goals, 8 assists for 18 points. So uh, I'm going to say these two signings are uh, more depth to fill out the roster for the Calgary Flames and to get some more established depth as well, just trying to be smart with the Sally Cup constraints with uh, many teams being in the Sally Cup crunch and as well the flat seller cap because after adding in Nikita Nesterov and the Josh Levo signings, the Calgary Flames now have committed $80.5 million in seller cap, and they still have only one, just over a million dollars in cap space, with the seller cap being at $81.5 million probably for the next few seasons. And we still have a couple more roster spots to fill as well. That's not including uh, Oliver Shillington, who has a this recording. He's still a restricted free agent, but you almost got to wonder, as always with a couple of these depth signs and the salary cap constraints, that could there still potentially be maybe some trades. But uh, I guess I have to ask, what do you think of these couple of signings that the Calgary Flames made? I would say there are a few more smart value signings that uh, you know could plug out the roster, have a little more established NHL depth and that's how many teams are filling out their rosters especially with the flat salary cap and teams being in a cap crunch as is and Calgary was in an okay position coming in as they had 17 million dollars in cap space but uh, a lot of that was spent on our biggest signings in Yiga Marchstrom and Chris Tanev but these last few videos that have been made has been filling out the roster and it's looking like it's taking shape that I would say overall I'm gonna say we should be a little better of a team next season and ultimately it's all gonna come down to judging this season on what happens in the 
2021 Stanley Cup playoffs in the terms of getting out of the first round because I'm in the get out of the first round or bust mode. That's probably myself and many other Calgary Flames fans and any more I would say news that the Calgary Flames make. I will plan to make more videos as they come and you know if there's any other trades or any more signings that have somewhat significance I'll make a video on it and as always most of my content comes I would say on the weekends there's always a few videos when I have more time to make content so as I say what do you think of the signs and as I always say if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey home the flames Hibben, roughnecks and stampeders I mostly do talk Calgary sports on my YouTube channel but I also have some other sports content where I talked about some news and major news in other major leagues and I have been doing my Remember the Calgary series where I take a look at the Calgary teams from the past. I also do have personal blogs, Tempt to Comedy, which I still do have plans to make those videos when I have time, but there's been lots going on in the sporting world that obviously I get more traction on those videos. But I still do have plans to do my secondary content when time allows, and I also do share my experience when I'm on the road or at a sporting event, which uh, there are any times right now, there hasn't been much of that. But I do have a catalog of that all on my channel, so if that all sounds like you'd be interested to watch, to follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey, you know what you need to do, just uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe. I also have my other social media links down in the description below for other ways you can follow me and find other, you know, tidbits that I might throw in future videos or just, you know, try to find anything else interesting I post on my Instagram, all part of following along with this Calgary sports fans journey. And I guess you also have to close up with the uh, all the jokes you hear about the Calgary Flames going after uh, the former Vancouver Canucks to improve our team. And some say, well, why can't you call, us, call them the Calgary Canucks? Well, actually, if you don't know, Calgary actually does have a hockey team the uh, in the Alberta Junior Hockey League, which is a little below the Western Hockey League, we actually already have a team called the Calgary Canucks. And yes, they do have the you know the blue and green colors that you see in the Vancouver Canucks. The logo is kind of just a mashup variation where it's shaped like a C. It has that you know rink stick logo that you see in the classic Vancouver Canucks logo. So in a way we already do have a Calgary Canucks uh, team, but uh, I would say it's just coincidental that a lot of the restrictive unrestricted free agents that the uh, Calgary Flames were targeting happened to play for the Vancouver Canucks. That's what makes this year a little more interesting. Because last year we signed a few former Edmonton Oilers. However, what made that rivalry a little more interesting and got robbed of the potential of the playoff series is that there were a lot of former Flames that went to Vancouver or Edmonton. In this case, though, there hasn't been much of former Flames going to Vancouver, especially in this offseason. But, uh, yeah, I just want to throw that in here before I say go Flames go, and I'll see you in the next video.